let's talk about John Deere's most popular and probably most loved tractor of all time, the John Deere 4020. The John Deere 4020 was made from 1964 to 1972. In that run, there's what we call the early series, which was from 1964 to 1968, and the late series from 69 to 72. Let me show you how to tell the difference between an early and a late series. Also, the late series has the side console. Your hydraulic controls and your three-point hitch are over here rather than on a dash like the early series. This late model has the PTO here, and as I said, everything else is in the console. If you watch my 3020 video, you'll know that the three-point and the hydraulic remotes are over here, and the PTO was over here. So as you can tell, this tractor is a late series, and it is actually a 1971 model. There were 184,879 total 4020s built. 8,123 of them were gas. 8,445 were LP. And 168... 1,311 were diesel. Of those 184,879, 17,732 were standard. We don't know how many were high crop or industrial, but these tractors came in row crop, standard, high crop, and industrial. The industrial 4020 was badged the 600. There were three fuel options for the 4020. Gas, diesel, or LP. The diesel engine was a 6.6 .6 liter 404 naturally aspirated engine with a 4.25 inch bore and a 4.75 inch stroke. This engine has a 16.5 to 1 compression, made 95 horsepower in the late tractors and about 91 in the early tractors. If this were a gas engine, it could be the 5.6 liter 340 cubic inch engine that they made from 64 to 65 with a 4.25 bore and a 4 inch stroke at 7.5 to 1 compression or in 66 to 72 they upped it to a 362 5.9 liter with 4 and a quarter inch bore and a 4 and a quarter inch stroke still at 7.5 to 1 compression the LP version would have essentially the same engine but with 9 to 1 compression. This tractor uses the 8 speed synchro. The other option would be an 8 speed power shift. If you'd like to learn more about the synchro or the power shift transmissions, I have a video on each one and I will put a link to it at the end of this video. Besides the obvious shifting difference between a synchro and a power shift, the capacity for hydraulic oil in the synchro was 10 gallons instead of 12 gallons for a power shift. The wheelbase for the 4020 was 97.5 inches for the row crop and 100.25 inches for the standard, but they both shared 151 inch length. The weight of the tractor could range with a gas synchro from 8,645 pounds all the way up to a diesel ballasted of 13,980 pounds. I'll put the stats on the screen so you can check them out now. Power steering, power wet brakes, a lot of things were standard with this tractor. There were some options you could get. Uh, one would have been dual remotes, which this tractor has. As you see, the dual hydraulic levers up here. The other option that this tractor doesn't have is differential lock. A few more options, you could get the hydraulic front wheel assist. That's pretty rare on these tractors. Most of them were two-wheel drive. Or you could get the cab. They weren't much of a cab back then. The uh, the John Deere cab, or you could get a Henniker or a year-round cab. I'd say that's one of the biggest improvements with the 30 series is the cab. Some more stats as we work from the front of this tractor. Gas and diesels had a 34-gallon fuel tank, and LP would have a 45-gallon. You can really tell an LP tractor in a 4020 because... They don't have a normal gas tank, they actually have a cylinder and it sticks up 
you'll see them sticking up above the hood. You can really tell a LP4020 from a distance. The 4020, just like the 4320, still use the uh, same front axle with six lug hub. As we look in here, there's our oil cooler and that fuel tank. On this side, we'll see our air cleaner. This tractor's new enough, it has a dry air cleaner. The earlier ones had oil bath air cleaners. You'll notice this tractor has 18.434 tires, and that's pretty common for a 4020. Some of them had 38s. It just kind of depended on uh, how they were ordered, but it seemed like the later ones had more 38s. As they went on, they had bigger tires on them. So the common size tire that I've seen on a 4020 would be an 18.434, an 18.438, or maybe a 16.938. If for a narrow tire, if you were doing uh, cultivating or spraying with these tractors. As we move to the rear, we see the Category 2 three-point hitch rated at 3,790 pounds. We see the dual remotes we've talked about. This tractor has actually been changed over to Pioneer ends. And we see the 540 and 1,000 PTO. A quick refresher, there's the 540. It holds in with a snap ring. If we want to go to... To 1,000, we take that shaft and put it in there, and we have 1,000 PTO now. You know, this is a friend's tractor, and he puts these steps on all the 4020s. I'd like to have a set. Those steps are pretty nice. Let me show you where the fluid fills and checks are on these tractors. Here we're going to have our fuel fill. There's going to be our coolant. I think his is broken off, but there would be our block heater. As we come to this side of the tractor, we've got our engine oil check, our transmission slash hydraulic fluid check. Here's going to be our depth and draft control adjustment, our seat adjustment. You can't read it, but short to tall. These seats are pretty cool for their time. You'd adjust that, pull this lever up go back and then it would come back down to one of these catches pretty neat for their time and that's really all to the fluid checks I'm back to the back of the tractor and I wanted to remind folks that may have not saw my other videos this is a question that comes up all the time what are these hooks on the back of John Deere tractors as I said in my other videos those are cylinder hangers that way um, if you didn't want to buy multiple cylinders for your implements, you could take the cylinders off, say, a disc and put them on a uh, cultivator or, or, you know, whatever you were doing. And uh, being that it has two remotes, it has two cylinder hooks. Nobody does that anymore. Everybody buys uh, extra cylinders or the equipment comes with cylinders. But back in the day, there was a lot of that done. They'd have one cylinder, and they'd move it from implement to implement. So, kind of neat. One other quick thing I want to mention about 4020s, early versus late. Uh, this tractor here would have came out with 12-volt electrical system with two 6-volt batteries. There's a battery box, and there's one on the other side, in series to make 12 volts. The earlier tractors had two 12-volt batteries, and a 24 volt electrical system. That's one difference between the early and the late. And uh, I like the 12 volt version better. I'm sure there's several details I didn't cover on this old reliable workhorse, but uh, these are the things I, that come to mind. Uh, these tractors are just wonderful. They're simple, they're strong, they're over engineered, and uh, if you take care of them, I guess they probably last forever I mean you think about it we're already this is a 71 model I'm making this video in 2024 so if my math is correct this tractor is 53 years old I do not know that if the uh, 6140R will be running at 53 years old and this one is not only running it's running great it's a very nice tractor very tight tractor and the friend of mine that has it has uh well let me show you 
there's another one. I think he has either five or six 4020s. So they are loved by many. Uh, as I said about the power shift and synchro video, I'm going to put them up at the top right now. Here's a synchro range video if you want to watch more about that. And now let me put up the power shift video. Click on either one of those if you want to go on in depth in the synchro range and power shift. Uh, you don't know how much I appreciate you watching to the end. If I can help you with something, if you've got a question, be sure to leave a comment. And uh, thank you for staying this long and come back for more to Machinery D. Appreciate you. Bye.